I made Majora's Mask using three different modeling techniques in a Libre. Let's go through what the pros and cons are of each method and what you might want to do if you have a similar project or need. Please note this is not a video for beginners. We have some links in the description of some of these methods being shown in other videos, but today we're going to assume that you know how to model and surface already, and we're going to talk about the techniques and their pros and cons. Let's jump into it. On my first method, I focused almost exclusively on the projection tool. I imported an image of the mask, traced around the body, and lofted it to a single point. And then I traced the features that I would like to emboss, deboss, and ran those projections. Making the model was straightforward, and being able to project one feature at a time allowed me to set specific values for every projected feature. It was also straightforward for being able to parametrically control and make changes to the model. I added a few more features, lofted and patterned the spikes, and I was done. The next method focused more on aesthetics, and I was able to get raised edges with curves that I could control even more tightly than with the projections I did in the last method. For this method, I made the body and traced an image as before, but deleted the face of the body to turn it back into a surface. I then traced a single spline for every feature instead of making closed sketches. I then used the thin extrude feature and extruded the shapes. Then I deleted the face on those and created surfaces. I trimmed the surfaces I created with the surface of the body of the mask to create paths that follow the contours of the mask exactly. I imported the edges of the surface into a 3D sketch and used that sketch as a sweep path to generate the features on the mask. This method made parametric control less straightforward. I was able to control everything and go back and make edits, but having to deal with sketches, thin extrudes, and surfaces made making changes a bit more complicated. But when it came to controlling the generated features, I feel I had more control than any other method. This is largely due to the fact that you don't have to use just sweeps, but if you're careful, you can also use centerline lofting, as shown here, to generate local thick and thin sections, giving you complete control over every cross-section of your feature. It's almost limitless. The next method is a favorite of mine when I make YouTube play buttons. I did this by modeling the body of a mask, deleting a face so it would become a surface, and then I thickened that surface from both sides. I deleted the face again to produce two evenly spaced surfaces. I'll call them the outer and the inner surfaces. Then I was able to trace all of the features that I wanted to emboss and extruded them. I didn't have to give much care to the length of the extrusion. I mirrored and used the trim surface feature to trim the extrusion on both the outer and inner surfaces. And then I thickened my original surface so that it was about even with my inner surface. With that surface thickened, I traced around the features I would like to deboss and extrude cut through all of that. Finally, after mirroring, I lofted the eyes to a single point and thickened my inner surface. And after lofting the spikes and adding a few extra details, I found the mask complete. So which of these methods would I put a ring on? Well, it kind of depends on what you're after. Are you after something that rebuilds super fast? Are you after something that gives you ultimate control over all the features that you have? Are you after something that's easy to make? For rebuild times, method one took one minute and 31 seconds to rebuild all. That of course is the one that uses the project feature on just about everything. 
Method 2, which used the sweet paths, was surprisingly the fastest, taking only 20 seconds. Method 3 took 4 minutes and 24 seconds to rebuild, but that was due to one feature, the project on that face of the mask. It seemed that when a project is combined with a thickened surface, it works, but it takes a little extra time. When this one project operation was taken away, the rebuild time shortened to just 31 seconds. If you're after dimensional control, method 2 is very strong. It's able to control every cross-section of every feature if a centerline loft is used, and it makes these features more customizable than any other method. In my model, it is also the fastest rebuilding and most powerful. But it also is the most difficult to make, most difficult to edit, and the slowest to model. If you're after something easy, I'd say method 3 with the surface trims is the most easy. It's forgiving as you don't have to stay within the boundaries of the mask and modeling with extrusions are so easy to get to work. You don't need to worry about complicated features failing like other methods. If you don't want to use surfacing at all, you can use method 1. There's a lot going for that as well, as the model was able to be made in very few steps, and it has a great result. Here's a quick matrix scoring these aspects from my subjective opinions. Well, the next time that you want to take some different techniques in following a surface, hopefully this has been a helpful video for you. Thank you for watching, and until next time, don't meet with any terrible fates.